Buenas noches, bienvenidos, good evening, and welcome to the Museum of Anthropology at the University of British Columbia on what has turned out to be quite a lovely uh, evening. Quite to our surprise, given that it was pouring torrentially earlier today. And to the opening tonight of Chicanx, Dreamers and Changemakers, Soñadores y Criadores del Cambio. I'm Stan, yeah, yay. My name is Sue Rowley and I'm the director of the museum. This museum is located on the ancestral unceded territory of the Hunkaminam speaking Musqueam people. Since our founding in 1949, Musqueam has stepped forward and asked us to be self-critical, to consider our position as a colonial institution and to work to create a different future for museums. This is ongoing work and we acknowledge and thank Musqueam for their continuing generosity in sharing their teachings with us. North America is the home to hundreds of indigenous nations and each of our countries are engaged in issues of decolonization and recognition of the ongoing legacies of colonization. So I'd just like to ask everyone to just take a moment to reflect on the richness, diversity, strength, history and resilience of indigenous peoples on this continent. It's our honor and privilege to have Sayethla Elder Larry Grant from Musqueam here with us this evening. Larry. Thank you, Sue. It's, uh... My pleasure to be here, my privilege as a Musqueam person. CEM to see it. See it all at then. Just fall up a queen on it. Tree to eat in a cornet. Tree it. To Museum of Anthropology. To need UBC. To need to tumble it for Musqueam. Block the show in us. Because he looked up the queen off. I mean, that and What's no book to see? I because we will to uh, kick a lot. Uh, but say, of course, uh, high stock book to homo cost. My say, of high tap. I was, yep. I want to say thank you for having me here this evening to be able to open up this. I think it's a wonderful exhibit, Chicanix. It's uh, something that I think our ancestors that were here to greet the first visitors to arrive here under the Spanish Captain Narvez and the English Captain George Vancouver, that they would appreciate this, knowing that they welcome the first white European settlers to arrive here and not knowing that they were inviting one of the most invasive species in the world. <laughs> uh, and that's really, really important to keep in mind because as our ancestor Cleoplano had a fort just down from this area, And this is where our uh, warriors lived and their families and defended the rights of the Musqueam people, the laws, the cultures, the resources, and the people. And these lands have always been here uh, for at least five, six thousand years on this peninsula. And it's interesting to know 
and understand this exhibit focuses on all of the brutality that colonization is connected to. And this is what our people here today, being here at the University of British Columbia, an institute of higher learning, one of the most renowned universities in Canada. When I retired from my day job and became part of the First Nations House of Learning, part of the First Nations in Endangered Language Program, co-teaching our language, thought to myself because for how many decades I worked as a tradesman dealing with immigrants that came out from Europe and around the world, not knowing, not understanding indigenous peoples. You guys get houses for free. You guys get land for free. You guys get education for free. You, you get medical help. And you guys don't do anything. And I'm saying, um, do you pay us rent for the land? And no, because I bought my lot. I said, who did you buy it from? The real estate guy. Well, where did he get it? Where did Canada get it? And they say, well, Canada bought it. No, they never. Our lands are unseated. Our unseated lands are lands that have never been sold, never been bought, bought, never been given away, but arbitrarily occupied by England, the crown of England, the crown of Canada, the crown of British Columbia, the University of British Columbia. We don't get any compensation from UBC. And these lands are unceded land. So when I think of this exhibit, the parallels are there. The white supremacists are still alive and well, doing their thing on a daily basis. This is 2022, and it has not abated. We, my wife was quite moved about that wall of portraits. I said, yeah, our people were shot just like those people, shot by the police. Instead of asking questions, they would shoot first and then ask questions. And they wouldn't get no answers because the people they were questioning, they had shot to death. And I, and I really see the parallels here this evening, and it's a wonderful thing to see. Because just this evening, just before we came, coming right to today's contemporary, Indigenous men, that the Fish and Wildlife fabricated evidence, did all kinds of things to try and prosecute these people and ban them from their cultural practices of using eagle feathers. And they fabricated over and over and over false evidence by the good people of Canada that have a position of responsibility and supposed to treat everybody the same. But we're very, very sure that they could prosecute Indigenous peoples. And these men, 
lost their reputations. They were leaders in the in their community, lost their jobs, and lost the respect of a lot of their community and the surrounding community of their communities. So that's still alive and well, is right on tonight's news. Just as we were leaving the house, it was on. So I want to say thank you again for allowing me this time and allowing me to be able to acknowledge our land and welcome everyone here to, I think, this wonderful exhibit, Chicanix, that uh, reverberates around the world, not just this little community of Vancouver, but around the world, that white supremacy is alive and well, and we as good people, is the only way it can change, have to get involved. And this is the thing that I think that many of us are reluctant to do, to be able to get involved and treat us all as equal human beings with the equity of all things that make this a society that people want to gravitate to. So, Colette, Thank you very much. Thank you, Larry, for your very powerful and moving words. I'm, we're standing here in front, for those of you that can't see or are, are uh, far away, uh, we're standing in front of an amazing sign by Alejandro Diaz, which says, make tacos, not war. And I think that's also incredibly appropriate for all of us to remember at the moment. Moa is so proud to have been able to co-organize this exhibition with the Americas Research Network, whose acronym we're gonna be using tonight is ARANET. Moa and ARANET first worked together at the inaugural World Museologies Workshop in Mexico in 2017, co-organized by Moa's previous director, Dr. Anthony Shelton. During this workshops, connections were made that led each of you to be here tonight. Chicanex was three years in development the challenges in creating a major cultural work during the pandemic is something we can all relate to, the working at a distance, the endless meetings via Zoom, and discussing critical issues over the phone, through texts and emails when you'd much rather be doing it in person. Chicanex, dreamers and change makers, sonadores y criadores del cambio, profiles contemporary artists who self-identify as Chicano, Chicana, or Chicanex, and lets them speak to us through their artworks. The issues and concerns they express and portray are varied and include home, community, border politics, and identity. 33 artists of different genders, ages, and experience are profiled in the exhibition, and we're all so privileged to be able to experience the vitality, different aspects and sense of Chicanx communities that they have chosen to share with us. It's now my immense pleasure to introduce the co-curators of Chicanx. One, the first is Greta de Leon, who is the executive director of Arenet. As co-organizer and co-curator, she has brought her extraordinary experience, her everlasting Energizer Bunny energy, and remarkable insights into the research and implementation of this exhibition. Her passion and knowledge have inspired her co-curator, Jill Baird, and the MOA team, and has really enriched 
MOA as an institution. Jill Baird is the head of our engagement and public programming department. She brings her vitality and years of knowledge and experience in art education to her work creating exhibitions that engage diverse audiences and provide us all with food for the senses and food for thought. Jill and Greta, over to you. Thank you, Sue. And the best part of the thanking is like taking this. <laughs> thank you, thank you everybody for being here. I'm gonna say first, thank you, Gilbert. It has been a most wonderful. Sorry, I'm really short. Sure. This is this is like <laughs> thank you. Um, it's been it's been. Like a rock star. <laughs> I'm going to start singing. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you for, for, for your time, for your dedication, for your passion, for your enthusiasm, for your sense of humor, for your vitality, for your lightness. And it's made um, working in this show absolutely fantastic. And I want to thank Moa and his incredible team, staff, uh, management, directorial, and, and everybody um, here to, 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 to do the completion of this show. Uh, it has been three years in the making. It has been um, a, real, a real privilege and a real challenge to do it during the terms of the, of the COVID and the, and the long distance. So, so I just wanna acknowledge and, and thank you for, for everything you have contributed to this show. Okay. So, <laughs> bienvenidos, buenas noches. <laughs> um, I'll just echo it. This has been an amazing, thank you, see? <laughs> I'll shrink. <laughs> this has been an amazing experience and it's really lovely to see all your faces here tonight and thank you for coming to join us. It's been a tough two years. So it's nice to be able to gather safely and together and, and, and learn from each other. I want to thank particularly Elder Larry Grant and Gina Grant. Thank you. It, 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 was, it was personally really important to me that this show resonate here. That we don't just see the world from afar. Is that, that we bring the world to us. Oh, and then when we bring the world to us, we see ourselves in it, or we see ourselves need to act in it. So thank you, Larry, for, for your wise words. But the show would be nothing except for the artists. There are 33 artists in the show, and I'm not going to name them all, but I'm going to name those who are in the house tonight. And I really encourage all of you to make yourself known to them. They're an amazing group of people and they're a chatty bunch. So they would love to hear from you and talk about their work. So I'm gonna acknowledge, well, we're gonna acknowledge it together because my yeah. Spanish accent is not it's very, very good. French. <laughs> it's very French. <laughs> so we'll start with, can you see? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Selva, Celia Alvarez Muñoz, it's in the house. You can put your hand up, Celia. And Judy Baca. Rolando Briseño. Alfred Quiroz. Ana Salinas. Raúl Servín. Linda Viejo. David Zamora Casas. And we want to acknowledge also Chicanex, Chicanex Digital, which is our digital catalog, contributors Gabriela Rodriguez Gomez and Ellen Riojas Clark. Um, we also want to acknowledge Rafael Guerra and Sandra Jean Castro Guerra, who have loaned the works in the show. And we personally want to acknowledge the presence of. Carlos Gonzalez Jaime, who is the editor of Chicanes Digital, that finally made it. So Chicanex 
dreamers and change makers, Chicanex, soñadores y creadores del cambio, is a show about, uh, with 33 artists of Mexican American descent that are activists and that have self identified as Chicano. To be a self identified and to claim this name, it involves an activism, a commitment to the community, a commitment to the civil rights, a commitment to the rights uh, of, of, of humankind, basically. Mm -hmm. And for us, it was very important to showcase the Chicano movement because most of the times it's often overlooked. Sorry, English is not my first language, so I will be Great. doing this. Um, which is a key component of the civil rights movement in the US and in the world. So we do wanted to acknowledge that. We wanted to show in this exhibit the enormous diversity, vitality, currency of the issues, and, and that this movement is, is, is very much alive, is very much relevant, and is very much pertinent. And I believe that the Vancouverites will find a lot of common threads in, in this show and you will be able to relate to a lot of, of the issues. Um, the show is completely bilingual. It's in English and Spanish. We have a digital catalog that will provide a lot of insight of the works of the artist and the artist playlist, recipes, good stories, books, books, films, and, 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 and essays of amazing scholars and, and writers. We wanted to have also the words of poets, of the artists, of thinkers that are part of the Chicano movement in the walls. So it will accompany you throughout the exhibit and their words will make you uh, just... They're gonna make continue. you laugh, they're gonna make you cry. But th they will make you feel something, make that you is for sure. So um, I would just wanna say that uh, um, Yes, it's completely relevant here to Vancouver for sure, but a personal gratitude to all the artists and the curate, my co-curator, but also the also essayists who actually helped me learn about uh, an aspect of American history I was unaware of. I thought I knew what a civil rights movement was. And then she learned to connect. And I've been schooled. And I really want to thank everyone whose generosity in schooling me about the Chicano civil rights movement. And to me too. And, and I do have to say just something about the Chicano women because and, 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 and the Chicanos because it is it is very relevant and it's it's very current and the amazing resilient of a culture that has been carved and created by themselves in contrast and complete opposite of two big dominant culture as is the British in the United States and as is the Spaniards in Mexico. And to think this is this is something that 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 it came to me today when they asked me is like so so how does this relate to colonialism? Well you might imagine a nation that has been colonized three times, right? They were indigenous, Spaniards came, then they ceded their territory or saw the territory to the United States. So they lost their language two, three times, their culture. So the fact that they are vibrant, creative, present, it's, it's an amazing show of resilience. And it's, a, as David Zamora Casas says, a superpower. <laughs> so not to keep you all standing any longer, Sorry. my job is to do the thank yous. So I'm going to... I'm going to list uh, people, but I want everybody who walks through the exhibition door to please have a look at the credits. Enormous. It's an enormous credit panel because it takes an enormous amount of creative talent to make a show like this. So, but I'm going to I'm going to isolate a few, um, particularly those here at the Museum of Anthropology. So I'd like to stop. Is that no good? Sorry. Okay. I'd, I'd like to start by thanking Skooker Broom, the exhibition designer. Cody Rocco, Yay. the graphic designer. Kate Melkirk, the fabricator and exhibition manager. Taya Deddy, um, the loans manager. Shabnan Honorbash, the, uh, <laughs> she's got a crowd here, uh, in, in conservation and collections. Anthony Barker, who's our IT. Jerry Lawson, media. And then the programs team that is making tonight work and we'll be making the programs work for the rest of the run of the show until January 1st, 2023. Amina Chergi, Anna Nielsen, Nadine Hassan, and Leah McGraw. 
I also want to thank Kate and Sue for the amazing job in editing all of the text. And, and you will see the text in the exhibit that we have a disclaimer saying that the text is written according to the presence, pre precedents and cultural traditions of each of the authors. So you will, you will not have the Canadian English and when you will not have the Mexican Spanish. You will have the Chicanex way of seeing and spelling our own world. Um, and I want to thank Sue, Moya, Kate, Anna, uh, Carlos Gonzalez Jaime, Mericia, Tracy, Cynthia, all of the staff in Arenet who is currently in Washington, Colorado, and Mexico, but they're very much present and, 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 and okay. tweeting. <laughs> Hello, Arenet. Uh, and, um, and all of you for being here. And so I'm going to do the organizations. Mm. So um, obviously, Greta, my co-curator from the America's Research Network. Oops, sorry. The Council of American Overseas Research Centers, the United States Department of State, the Embassy of the United States, Ottawa, Canada, and the Consul General of Mexico in Vancouver, and the U.S. Consul General in Van and the U.S. Consul General in Vancouver. And we have three community partners that are helping us with, um, oops, I missed one, and the Instituto de los Mexicanos en la Exterior. There's your French for you. Um, community <laughs> partners working on public programming, Latin, Latin Coover, Latin American Cultural Center Society, and two from San Antonio, Texas, Ceci and Vamos Abrazo. This exception is going to travel to San Antonio in March. March of 2023. So, I think that's good. Anything okay, else? yeah. Say no. two. Okay, <laughs> muchas gracias. Y esperemos que disfruten de la exposición. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's, there's nothing quite like listening to the curators uh, bring the passion that they have for the show to everybody at the opening. So thank you so much, Greta and Jill, for your comments this evening. And I just wanted to echo what Jill said at the end. Chicanex uh, runs here from May 12th until January 1st, 2023. And then we're really thrilled that it's going to be traveling to Ceci in San Antonio, Texas. And we're just so, so happy to let you know that MOA is also partnering with Ceci on a youth exchange program. And so youth from San Antonio, Chicanx youth will be coming to Vancouver this summer and indigenous youth from Vancouver will be traveling to San Antonio next summer. So we're just about done for this evening, but I would be terribly remiss of me not to let you know that if you hang around until eight o'clock, you have the incredible opportunity to see a um, performance by artist and activist David Zamora Casas. And I have had the opportunity to spend a little bit of time with him over the last few days. And I think that you are in for an extraordinary treat. So please do hang around for that. And if you need a little something to eat or drink, there's a cash bar in the cafe and there's food trucks uh, out in the parking lot. So thank you everybody for coming this evening and I hope you all enjoy Chicanx, Dreamers and Changemakers, Sonadores y Criadores del Cambio. Thank you for coming. Thank you.